Here's the hospital parlor. We're gonna go in here and get the milk samples. There are a lot today. So now we're gonna go up to my lab. Here we are. Hey guys, I'm Grace, I'm Dairy Farmer G, and today we're gonna be testing milk samples and talking a little bit about mastitis in the cows. So mastitis is like a bacterial infection in the udder of the cow. It makes the milk like gross and like clumpy and not desirable. Um, so when the cows have mastitis, they're not milked into the consumer tank for people to drink, but they're taken to the hospital parlor where the cow is kept until I diagnose her with what type of mastitis she has from the samples. And then the herdsman, can treat her specifically for the mastitis she has. And then once she is healed, she can go back to the rest of the herd. The first thing I like to do is to take my notebook where I keep all the records and I write down each cow's number in the notebook. And then this um, code, so LF would be left front quarter of the udder. So like her left front teat, RR is right rear. And that just basically tells the herdsman which section of the udder the mastitis is in. So I'm going to write that all into my notebook. Now that I've had it all written in my notebook, I'm going to set out the samples in the correct order. Each sample tube has milk in it from the cow that has this number and then which quarter of the udder it's coming from. I'm gonna go to my mini fridge and pick out the plates. These are what we are going to grow the mastitis bacteria on. And based on what comes or what shows up on these plates after they're in the incubator for 24 hours, we can determine what type of mastitis they have. So first I take a plate out, shake the excess water off, and I wipe the water off one side of the plate where I'm gonna write what number test it is. The number is important so that we know which milk sample we are testing. Then I get out some cotton swabs. They're sterile. So when I take them out of the packaging, they cannot touch anything except for the milk and the plate. So then I take it out of the lid, take my first sample, open it, cotton swab, dip it in, and then I can put two samples in each plate. So I'm just going to go on the right side of this one.
shook my milk sample. And then I get the next one. And now this one is gonna go on the left side of the plate. And you can kind of see it's like chunky in there. I don't want to spill it. But I try to avoid the chunks and just get some liquid out of it. All right, now I'm going to put the lid on, you flip it upside down, and it'll go in the incubator. The incubator set at 37 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty warm Fahrenheit-wise, and it's going to cook the bacteria on the plate. And then tomorrow, we're going to check and see what grew. Now we had to keep the samples for a little bit just in case we need to do further testing. So their number and what quarter they are is written on the side, but we're gonna write it on the top as well, just in case the writing on the side gets like smeared or smudged or wiped off. Here is an example of what a mass tire smoke looks like. It's kind of yellowish and really clumpy. Not good. And now we are going to store our samples in the freezer. I usually keep them for a month and then we throw them out. You're probably wondering what that little cup is for. We like to keep it moist inside of the incubator so that they're not like growing in a desert. So I fill it up with a little bit of water. just sits in there with the samples. Okay, it has been 24 hours over that actually. So we're gonna take the samples out of the incubator and see what we got. So the first one, we have that pink stuff, Klebsiella, I'm sorry, not Klebsiella, E. coli. This one's E. coli, this one's no girl. So I'm going to write the results in my notebook. Plates three and four. Hmm. Three is no grow. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to ask my sister, Kate. She is the lab expert. Mm. Yikes. Okay. This is no grow. This one is E. coli. Next plate. Good. These are both no growth. Nine and ten. These are no grow as well. Because there's no significant growth on any of the sections of the plate. So we're good. I would say this is strep D and the other one's no grow. So 
So we have a lot of no-grows, but the ones that are no-grow, I still have to test them again using a different plate to see if they have protothica, which is a bad type of mastitis. And if the cow has that, she usually cannot be treated. She can't be treated and it's usually contagious. So we are going to have to sell her. So now that I got all the results off the plates, I'm just gonna throw them away. And then I'm going to write the results on the paper I got from the hospital parlor yesterday and give it back to the guys so that they're able to treat the cows so they can return happy and healthy to the parlor. And then their milk can get shipped out and come to you at your table. Thanks for watching.